back here in uh, Durban by the Legacy uh, Bonsai Nursery and, and as you can see behind me uh, it's, it's a wonderful day here today and it's actually very very hot so uh, if you see a bit of sweat you'll know why and once again I'm, I'm here with uh, another Legacy um, Vince Lorenka Senior and uh, once again I've, uh, it's a Friday afternoon so I've got a bunch of roses and some more at the shop to sell so welcome Vince again to Legacy Bonsai in the garden centre and to beautiful Durban and uh, thank you for the roses and uh, once again we're here to talk about no, products. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely day, yes. It's, uh, I'm sure we could talk about a lot of things. Yeah. I'm sure and I see you brought your companion, your dog yeah. with you today. Yeah, he's running around here somewhere. Running around. So, um, yes, the, the other day we spoke about roses and rose care and I think uh, Today I wanted to have a word with you about fertilizers and, uh, and grasses because one of the questions that come often to the shop about products is, is fertilizers. Now, I must just tell you, you, you taught me a lesson in the shop just now about fertilizers and numbers and uh, you used the word Sudoku. So uh, the thing about fertilizers is you get 323s and 321s and 411s and whatever and I think you showed me a trick on what these numbers actually mean. Yes, it's, it's, it's a whole configuration of different numbers and it's just merely a ratio and from the ratio you can get the percentage of the macro elements that is necessary and net for, for grain. Um, I mean, talking of fertilizer, we could talk all day about it, but there's, there's so, much, so much to talk about. But yes, the, the, the basics is your nitrogen, your phosphate and your potash and uh, in the different forms. And, uh, and the analysis, like I said earlier, is like doing a Sudoku. Um, you, 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 you've got to get the figures right. The percentages have to be correct. And uh, the concentration. So it's, it's not merely the higher numbers. It's actually the ratio of the numbers and the cation exchange capacity and, and, and all, all that takes place. And even, even in fertilizers, there's, there's so much more than just the fertilizers besides the macro, major, micro, microbial, and, and the other organic forms and, and liming, for instance, putting calcium into the soil, liming, which is essential to get the microbial action in the soil going. So yes, we go from under the ground right to astrology when it comes to, to, mm. to fertilizer. Where, where does it start? Where does it end? And what form of fertilizers we get? We get organic, inorganic, slow release, fast release, hydroponic, all these forms. So yeah, there's a whole lot of configurations of, 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 of um, fertilizer. And there's so much to talk about. We we'll probably talk all day about it. So I think we must just elaborate on any one or two so things. I think, I think the big problem is that people come in and they look at the picture on the, on the fertilizer and they say, okay, that picture shows me uh, a cauliflower. So do I use it for my veggies? And that picture shows me grass and I use it for grass. So in essence, it's quite easy. Um, so if grass is a 411, well then I use it for my grass. So we, we try to make it a little bit easier. But, but let's use an example. So you do roses. Um, so this is a Gravita rose fertilizer. It's got pictures of roses on. So that's quite easy. Uh, if I'm growing roses, I use it. But at the bottom here, it says 818 and it says 32. Now you've shown me the Sudoku numbers on, on how that works. But in essence, um, that's the NPK number, yeah. uh, and there's a combination of that gets you to 32, which is a percentage of, of the NPK in that. The rest of it is a, is a filler type product, and, and you'd use that. But, but here's the thing I wanted to ask you. A lot of it has to do with how I apply this. If I go take that and I uh, apply it liberally in one area, then surely I'm breaking the rule of how this product works. Is that right? It's an, an, an inorganic form of fertilizer. So if you put highly concentrated amounts, you're going to be more destructive than productive. So I think your, 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 the, the numbers, the amount that you put in, you'd rather be cautious. It's like putting salt in your food. The excessive amounts of salt will certainly make the food just unpalatable. The same goes with fertilizer. Excessive amounts of fertilizer in an inorganic form will cause all sorts of problems, kill your plants, do everything else. So it's everything what you don't want to do. So in proportion, once you've done it, you analyze it, or you have a good idea, I think the application rate is very good. Right, don't go, so 10, 15 grams to a square meter, to, depending on the concentration of the chemical uh, fertilizers. Yeah. Now, 
So I could use rose fertilizer on my grass. Yes, it's uh, the uh, the ratio of NPK is still there. Probably be ideal for even this particular one. Be ideal if you if you if you're using this on grasses and it's got a nice potash mouth, as opposed to the number you gave me four one one first as a lawn fertilizer. This this I I would even prefer this particularly if you're picking up your grass cuttings. So you replenish the potash that you're taking away from the, the, the lawn. So right. so this is an ideal one. And then the middle number, of course, the one is your phosphate. So that's your root feeding. The last figure is your potash, your bodybuilding, and your first figure is your nitrogen, which gives you the greenness, so the photosynthesis of the sun and what have you. And that's, that's now, a lot of people are worried about, in particular on lawns, uh, putting down fertilizer and then having uh, having issues um, with burning or the sun burning. Do you have to water once you put down your fertilizer? Well, I, I think it would be ideal if you water, just to dilute it, to to the extent that's required, and you get the best results, of course. And then when you're using a slow release, um, what's the purpose of a slow release uh, fertilizer? There's it's just different forms of slow releases. In a slow release, it's, it's, the, um, it's either you get a slow release where it works in conjunction with the soil rather than the water, so the slower process, or you have it in a form, um, a slow release in the form of a controlled release temperature based so um, uh, it just releases slower but based on the temperature so the higher the temperature the more the release the more the release of course the quicker it goes and uh, the, the better the uptake so the, uh, the slower release of course is the, the release of the nutrients by diffusion now I want to talk to you about lawns and fertilizer because that's it's one of the big questions I get asked so with lawns and fertilizer, you'd be putting fertilizer, is it important to put down a, a, a lawn dressing over a fertilizer when you're putting it down? Is it necessary? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, if you're putting a lawn dressing, um, especially an organic lawn dressing, you just then, um, it sort of, um, how could I say, it, it prolongs the efficiency, efficacy of the, of the fertilizer. So you're gonna get better results and much better uh, longevity of, of the nutrients because the, the organic form holds, holds the nutrients in suspense rather than in uh, letting it leach out. Yeah. Okay. And a lot of people ask me about lawn dressing and ask the question, you know, does the lawn dressing not contain weeds itself? Uh, so when you put lawn dressing down, does it contain how do How do we make sure that lawn dressing doesn't have weeds in it? Well, it shouldn't. Um, uh, if it's gone through the proper process, and of course, you always are exposed to, to, to weeds that are blown in. So, uh, ideally, it's your lawn dressing has gone through the process and there's, has no weeds or shouldn't have. In the process of making the, 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 the lawn dressing, you should have generated enough heat to concrete or uh, destroy, destroy any weeds that should have been or could be. But th that doesn't stop any weeds from blowing in. Uh, so, you always have that. You always have to contend with those weeds. Okay, so now we've got weeds. So that's that's the next issue that we have, and a lot of people ask me about is when they've got weeds in their grass. Now, weeds in paving is, is pretty simple. There you can deal with uh, with weeds in paving, and there we have products like uh, like Springbok, which has been a very. Which, uh, well, then you have a you, you have a product that's a total kill. So um, and non-selective. So it picks on anything with a green leaf and takes it out. And so that's a totally um, uh, so non-selective non springbok or, or roundup. Roundup, or, or okay. you have others like glyphosate, paraquat, things like that, which are quick killers. Um, the, the roundup is a slightly slower process, but you have paraquat, which almost work instantaneously. You have it working um, within a few hours on a hot day, okay. but with the roundup, the process is about four hours for the take up through the through the the leaves and the translocation of that chemical down right down to the root and that's the end of that product. Yeah. Right. And, so then, that's uh, a total thing. and then the biggest problem in lawns is when you've got a, uh, lawns uh, that are having weeds come up, obviously it's important to find out if it's a broadleaf or a, it's not a oh, yeah. broadleaf. What do we do then? Uh, There's a whole lot of different selective weed killers. You know, you have um, uh, weed killers that, that that are, are, are particular for any or for types of grasses. 
choose particularly broadly for human beings in, in a blade of glass. So uh, there are chemicals that, like the one I think we're holding, um, that will pick on a broadleaf weed as opposed to a blade of grass and it, it actually causes a, the mode of action, it causes it to burst its growth cells so it grows itself to death and then it allows the blade of grass to continue growing. Okay, so it's, it's quite magical in that way. When you um, use this, does it stress your normal grass as well? Should you be boosting your grass while you're treating? Again, just like fertilizer, the application rate is important. Uh, once you go excessively, you're going to start taking out the blade of grass as well. So your, your ratio of application is important. Okay. So, so once you've applied this and uh, your grass and you started to kill this grass, do you have to continue with maintenance of, of this as you see the weeds coming up? Is it something you have to do on an ongoing basis? It's, it depends on the, the, the weed killer you're using. There are type of many other weed killers as well. But um, with a post-emergent like you have with grasses, you, know, you, you, know, you have to use your selective weed killers that are particularly for that purpose. You know, like your nut grasses, your stellantises and things like that, you'd have to have a different weed color. So one of the big questions is organics, if people ask me about organics. And obviously the one thing about pests and insects and whatever is that one tends to do anything you can to eradicate your roses or your clivias from these things. Um, but we found a lot of the organic material is not as effective and I suppose that applies to lawns and, and stuff as well. Oh yes, and when it comes to organics I think there's going to be a lot of manual uh, work done to, to overcome it. The organic forms are a little more, a little more awkward. And, uh, and not as efficient as it is there in organics, unfortunately. So we brought out some organic materials in the shop and we tried them, but we, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But uh, I think when it comes down to weeds, you either got to live with them or you've got to treat them. It's the way well, it is. Alternatively is the way to organically do it. Because if it's your weeds or your lawns, you get your lawn to be so strong that it doesn't allow the weeds to occupy. There's no room for a weed to, to, to grow in it. If, you, if you're going to grain it, especially organically, correctly, then, then there's no chance of weeds. You just try and eliminate them. So the strength of the grass will stop the weeds from coming through. All right, so Vince, thanks very much for joining us again. Yes. And we'll, no, uh, we're going to grab you on another one of these fine oh, days. Yes. It's always and a pleasure to come out, Jack. Yeah? I think uh, maybe yes. in our next talk we'll be talking about another, so maybe some garden insects, but we'll uh, see you on another yes. one of these updates. Yes. Thank Even. you, Vince. Thank thanks you. very much.